Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BJ Tech News, and today's episode is the next web episode of my Everything Office 2013. So today's quick start guide is all about Excel 2013. Uh, not too long ago, recently got the full version of Office 2013. I don't have the preview version, which is the customer preview version that a lot of you guys downloaded probably in my blog site or from uh, another location and uh, this right here is fully blown uh, licensed and it's good to go and today's is all about Microsoft Excel 2013 which looks different from previous versions so um, this is the reason why I created this guide to help you minimize the learning curve okay so when you first started this is what you get um, is basically the same thing as Word 2013. This is the same thing. So I'm not going to really go over this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new blank workbook with you guys. And from here I'm just going to navigate, okay? So the first thing is you can add commands to the quick access bar. So the quick access bar is basically this little guy right here at the top. That's the quick access bar. Right there. Okay. Now the quick access bar which allows you to keep favorite commands and buttons visible even when you hide the ribbon. Uh, certain commands by default you will get uh, the save button, the redo and undo. And believe it or not you got a new one right here and this new one is the touch and mouse mode which I will go over that soon. Okay. Uh, followed by that is your your ribbon now your ribbon is something that was introduced I believe if I'm not mistaken this is your ribbon right here right all this right here is your ribbon okay and the ribbon was basically introduced I believe in office 2007 I think that's when the ribbon was introduced to everybody now uh, each ribbon has tabs has groups each group has a set of related commands Okay. Uh, again, it's really just like the older versions that you guys have been using. If you're still using Office 2013, hopefully you're not and you have touched 2007 or 2010. This stuff is a little bit familiar with you guys. Okay. The home normally contains, you know, the basic commands of the paste, cut, copy, format, painter. You got the font options, the alignment, the number, the styles, the cells, the editing, and etc. Okay. At the top right here this little arrow right here basically it's the show or hide the ribbon feature now it's this little guy right here this little there you go <laughs> and if you click the ribbon displays options or if you press control F1 to hide or show the ribbon so let's let's click this guy and see what it is so these are the features that you would get you got an auto hide ribbon show tabs or show tabs and commands it gives you a brief explanation of which option uh, you choose will do so that's pretty cool that's that's kind of new um, what, what else what else what else can I tell you guys okay so as always to manage manage any file you know you go to the file option right which allows you to open, save, print, and share your files. Also, change options and account settings in your view. Okay, I'm not signed in, so I don't have access to my SkyDrive. So that's pretty cool. You got the option feature here, which allows you to manipulate and give you more power into the Access application. So that's pretty cool. You have the Create Sheet option. Now, Create sheet option, which I'm going to show you guys, is this right here. This little button right here, which is they did the design wise, they changed it a little bit. It looks a little different from 2010 and 2007. But this will allow you to add more sheets as needed. By default, you would normally get sheet one. If you create another one, it would do a sheet two and a sheet three, which is pretty cool. And, um,. You have the change views and the zoom in and zoom out features right here. So the change views is this little guy right here. Okay. And it allows you to work faster in the right view, right? Whichever view you're in, it basically gonna help you in the long run 
and um, editing that file and managing that file a little better. So by default, you have the normal, which is what you see now. You got the page layout, and then you got the page break preview. A lot of people by default normally use the normal. Um, right next to the normal, you have the zoom. By default, it's set by 100%. Now the zoom in and zoom out allows you to drag a zoom slider to change the zoom levels. Uh, a lot of people will just leave it as is. For myself, I use Excel for do database stuff and inventory, and I normally don't change the zoom in at all. Okay. Now another cool feature is one of these little guys right here. A lot of people don't really notice these little arrows, but these little arrows are basically open. Uh, dialog boxes for you for more hidden features for uh, let's say for the fonts or for the alignment or for the numbers so for example if I click on this little guy right here it would open a dialog box for only the fonts and as you can see I have a little bit more power I could do a strike through super uh, super strip subscript and color I could do everything in, on a dialog box if you're not really into this right here okay now, how to get started with your Excel 2013. If you've been using 2007 or 2010, you're basically familiar with the ribbon, which is cool. You want to know the changes in Excel 2013 though. So I recommend you guys to go over all the tabs, each one, one by one, looking at it to get familiar with it. Now, if you've been using Excel 2003, you want to know what, where to find the 2003 commands and toolbar buttons on the ribbon. Right here on the top, there is a question mark. And if you click on that question mark, it will basically take you into uh, the Microsoft site. It's not actually going to open up a browser, but it's going to open up a dialog box, which is connected to the internet. Hopefully, you got internet access. And you can basically type something in and it will provide you the information that you are looking for so for example I'm gonna click on the question mark right here and the question mark should pop up this if everything is working well your internet work if your internet is working properly you should get this and you can start searching like printing I don't know let's go printing and there you go it gives you a rundown of all the you know all the topics about printing and you can just find one and you're good to go Okay. Now, guys, I can't stress it. I can't stress this enough. I want you to explore the ribbon. I want you to play around with the program. That's the only way that you guys can actually learn this stuff. Explore the ribbon. If you use the ribbon in an earlier version of Excel, you notice a few changes. The Insert tab has new buttons to help you create charts and pivot tables. So let's check that out. Let's insert. How cool is that? Pivot tables. Awesome. So it has its own individual table section, which is pretty cool. Now, there's also a new filter group with buttons for creating sliders and timelines, which that is awesome. That's pretty right here. See, sliders and timeline, which is a cool feature. Uh, other tabs appear when you're working on certain things like charts and pivot tables. Uh, those tabs also change to make things easier to find, which is pretty cool. So if you guys are working on a, let's say, uh, if you're working with a pie chart, I don't know, I'm just making stuff up. As you can see, I, I chose a pie chart, and at the bottom, at the top, I mean, sorry about that, uh, the ribbon changed. It allows me to manipulate and add more features into my, my chart. I don't have any data, so there's no, it's not really a pie there. Okay. Now, things you might be looking for. So let's let's open this, this PDF right here, and things that you might be looking for. Now, this list right here provides you what you should be looking for for Excel 2013. Okay. So the basic things is uh, to create, open, save, print, share, or export files or change options basically the same as the older version and it's the file option. Uh, if you want to format, insert, delete, edit, or find data in cells, columns, and rows, rows I mean, uh, you can go to the home. Uh, if you want to create tables, charts, spark lines, which is a new thing with 2013, reports, sliders, which is another new thing, and hyperlinks, it's everything is inserted inside the insert. That's where you can find it. Tab. If you want to set 
page margins, page breaks, print areas, and sheet options. Again, it's it's basically the same as 2007, 2010. It's, it's located in the page layout tab. Uh, find functions, define names, or troubleshoot formulas, the formula tab. If you want to import or connect to data, sort and filter data, validate data, flash fill values, or perform a what if analyst that is located in your data tab. Uh, check spelling, review, revise, and protect. A sheet or worksheet is review and change workbook view and arrange windows, freeze panes, and record micros is a review. Now all these guys right here is considered your ribbon. This is where you guys are going to be finding all this stuff from. If you guys have used 2007, 2010, I, I can't stop stressing this because it's basically true. It's the same. Uh, basically everything you was doing in 2010 and 2007, you could do it as in 2013. It's just the problem is that 2013 is mostly based for cloud services. The only thing that they did is just to change the way everything looks and feels and they added a couple more features. Apply features without the ribbon. Now believe it or not, you can apply features without the ribbon. In Excel 2013, we placed some they placed Microsoft placed uh, some frequently used but hard to find commands and buttons within easy reach. Believe it or not, it's pretty cool. When you select data on a worksheet, the quick analyst button button appears. So let's let's uh, try that out. So let's uh, let's delete this and let's put some data. Let's uh, I don't know. Let's go one, two, three, four, five. There you go. I missed I missed one. Let's just put uh, ten in the cell. Okay. So let's say I want to select all this stuff, and as you can see you get something new. Now this right here is considered a quick analyst. All you could do a short, uh, quick command is control Q. It gives you quick access to many useful fe features you may not have been aware of and lets you preview them on your data before you make the stick. So that's awesome. So let's click on that and see what kind of features it allows you. Look at this. This is pretty cool. It gives you options to format, charts, totals, tables, spark lines. This is awesome. I mean, this is pretty exciting. It actually makes the workflow a little easier. Cool. When you're entering data, you might notice that Excel fills automatically as it detects a pattern, which is pretty cool. You will get the flash fail option button to make for, um, to make further decisions. So that's pretty cool. So the, the flash fill options is basically when you're doing like a sequential uh, number like 1 through 10 and you want to continue you're gonna get a new option that's gonna help you out to fill it up now you can also have better access to chart features which is pretty cool creating a recommended chart is a great way to start uh, you will still want to customize the style and the show the exact data you need to make it your own you want to make that stuff your own right so Excel 2013 gives you these options right next to the chart just click the chart element, chart styles, and chart features. So what does that mean? Um, so let's in, let's go to insert and let's go to chart. Let's go to chart. I want a 3D pie. Boom! Because of this, I highlighted that. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but check this out. This right here, this is new right here. That's pretty cool. That allows you to give more features into your chart. So this guy right here. Uh, chart elements like I said just right chart styles and this last one is chart filters so that's pretty cool okay now how to work with people who don't yet have Excel 2013 because I know that's a big issue and uh, let's go to the next PDF slide and believe it or not if your company has upgraded to 2013 most likely some of your clients are still working with older versions of office so what's the problem Sometimes if you're giving them 2013 and they try to open it up to it with an older version, it's not going to work. But most likely if they're giving you an older version and you're trying to open it up 2013, that's great because Office is always backwards compatible. But uh, when you're giving a newer version to an older version, it never works. So that means you have to save down. So these are some of the stuff or the stuff that you guys need to look out for. When you open a workbook that it's created with Excel 97 or 2013, what would happen? These are the things that would happen. And 
Excel opens the workbook in compatibility mode, mode and keeps it in an Excel 97 2003 format, which the extension for that is the XLS. Uh, this compatibility mode actually began, I believe, in Office 2007 when you started working with other people with O3. So that feature hasn't gone away. Uh, when you say workbooks Excel will tell you about the capability issues and blah 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 that hasn't gone away as well uh, this right here is a best practice which you should be doing and what you should be doing is go to file info and convert it is the best thing that you be doing uh, you should be doing to share your workbook to others that don't have the same version as you now you save your workbook as an Excel 2013. So what happens? Excel saves the workbook in the Excel 2007-2013 format, which they kept the same format as XLSX, which is pretty cool. Now, uh, if you plan to share that workbook with people who use an earlier version, best thing that you want to do, best practice, is go to File, Info, and check for issues. Now, the last thing that you should be looking out for is you save your workbook as an Excel 97 and 2003 file. Now, what will happen? Excel will automatically check the file for cap capability issues and show them any new Excel 2013 features you use. And uh, best practice, what you should be doing is uh, access any cap capability issues and resolve them before you share the workbook. Okay. And the last thing before I let you guys go. So, go back into my virtual machine and there we go now now find advanced features like every office suite has advanced features to record an occasional micro you use the micro button right uh, which is in the view tab so let's go to view I'm going to show you guys go to view where's the view micros right uh, but if you plan to ret um, if you plan to uh, constantly create or edit micros and forms or use XMLs or VBA solution you want to add the developers tab which is something that I use a lot at work and uh, to do this you have to go into the options and you have to customize your ribbon so I'm actually gonna do that for myself so what we're gonna do is gonna go to file we're gonna options and within options you want to customize the ribbon and within the customized ribbon this is everything that's within the ribbon so I want to check the developers tab because that's what I want and I want to press OK everything blinked you know everyone blink everything blinked at the <laughs> at the top of the ribbon portion and as you can see I have a new tab which is the dev uh, developers tab which is a cool feature uh, now enable add-ins that comes with Excel now believe it or not one of the add-ins that I know a lot about Excel is PDF you know, if you install Adobe PDF Professional, there is a plugin that's added into your Excel, and most likely you should receive a new tab to you know create work uh, workbooks out of PDFs. Now, Excel 2013 comes with several add-in programs that lets you do some advanced data analysts. Uh, there are common Excel add-ins such as the Analyst Two Pack or the Solver add-in. Enabling add-ins adds them to the ribbon. Just select them in the manage box on the add-in tab on the Excel option and dialog. So basically, you want to go to file. Let's check some of these add-ins are. Go to options and add-ins. And within, come on, there we go. And within add-ins, you want to Excel add-ins and go. So these are the ones that are pre-built when you first install Office 2013. Again, most likely you could add more and they would be here. You could disable them, you could add them and do whatever you want. Okay? Now, if you have Professional Plus version of Office, you will also have some new add ins such as the Inquire, uh, Power Pivot for Excel 2013, uh, or Power View add in. The Power View add in is even, even has a des uh, designated button on the Insert tab. Clicking the button for the first time enables the add-in, which is pretty cool. As you can see, I don't have those plugins because I don't have the Professional Plus. Mm -hmm. And that's about it, guys. Uh, that is a quick start guide on Excel 2013. Hopefully, you guys enjoy the video. Please share. Please comment. Please like. Please, uh, especially share. Share it in Facebook, Twitter. It, 
Uh, do whatever you need to do. Hopefully you guys enjoy this episode, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.